Be honest with me. What do you see when you look at me? You see a smart guy? You see a problem solver? You see a Riddler? Well, today we're going to find out whether I'm any of those things because we are taking the bright side 15 tricky riddles that will apparently drive me insane. Now, I've never considered myself to be much of a Riddler, but according to Brightside, if I do get these all right, then I may have a role in the next Batman. Let's do this. A rooster laid an egg on top of the barn roof. Which way did it roll? For anybody who's been to elementary school, there's always that one kid who will try to fool you with this question, like in fourth grade, he thinks he's a magician or something. So the answer to this, of course, is that roosters don't lay eggs because they're male chickens, and then hens, who are female chickens, lay eggs. Anyways, the egg wouldn't roll anywhere because the egg does not exist. So question two, what was the US president's name in 1996? Doesn't really feel like a riddle. So the US president from 1993 to 2001 was Bill Clinton. Maybe the trick is that his name is actually William. I don't know. Whether you like it or not, it was still Donald J. Trump. Names usually don't change with time. First of all, once a president, always a president. You always use the president nomenclature in front of your name. The answer is Bill Clinton. I'm accepting this, I'm two for two, forget this quiz. Imagine you are in a sinking rowboat surrounded by sharks. <laughs> Bummer. But it still doesn't mean that you should give up, right? How would you survive? Okay, so the number one thing you should do when approaching a shark is to not provoke it and make it feel like it's in danger. So I would say if you ignore them, you should be fine. I mean, unless it's a really hungry shark and they see you have like some tuna sashimi on board. But generally speaking, if you're in a rowboat, just don't use the paddle to hit it. I think you'd be fine. So that's my logical answer, but since it's a riddle quiz, I'm guessing that there's something more to this. So I would say you're probably already dead and there's no need to survive if you're dead. It seems like a hopeless situation, I know. But all you have to do is stop imagining. Voila! Okay, I mean, I guess it's right. Two for three. Question four. If you had one match and entered a dark room, which contained an oil lamp, newspaper... I literally got this question on the common sense quiz that I took. Brightside's recycling questions now. Imagine being a content creator who just recycles the same ideas over and over again. Couldn't be me. But anyways, the first thing that you should light should be the match, so then you can actually light the other things. No need to think about it for too long. You already made a choice by lighting the match in the first place. Perfect. Three for four, I think I'm getting smarter. Larry's father has five sons named 10, 20, 30, 40, and what's the name of his fifth son? First of all, they should call Dyfus on this father for naming his kids intervals of 10. 10, 20, 30, 40. So they want me to say 50. However, I was actually listening to the question and they said that Barry's father, which means that the last kid is gonna be Barry. Name is, of course, wait for it, Larry. Did you get it? I swear he said Barry. I was even listening because I knew in the question there would be something and then I misheard the name. You got to give me some points on that one. Are we counting it? Ugh, how do I screw that up? I thought I had them locked down. How many times can you subtract 10 from 100? So they want me to say 10, which mathematically would be the correct answer. However, I noticed they like to be super technical with their wording, and so 10 from 100, you could only subtract once. So I'm actually gonna submit my answer as one. In fact, you can do it only once. Next time. What'd I say? Miss Jones lives in California and has five children, three boys and two girls. Our question is simple. What's her husband's last name? The husband's last name is Jones because they just said Mrs. Jones lives in California with her five children. Yeah, I heard you this time, narrator. But the biggest issue I have with this question is that why is she living in California? And then the second biggest issue I have with this question is why is she raising five kids in California? Do you know how expensive that is? She's probably making $750,000 and half of that is going to the Chino Hills Elementary School. These kids are so spoiled and they don't even know it. Anyways, Jones, final answer. Miss Jones doesn't have a husband. If she did, she would have been a missus. Don't tell me I misheard that one. Miss Jones. Do they expect the people taking this quiz to have like these Sony surround sound speakers to hear every single enunciation that they're making? So what, am I four for seven now? I hate this quiz. What was the tallest mountain in the world before Mount Everest was discovered? So as a geography buff, I actually know the answer to this. Moana Kea in Hawaii, which is an underwater mountain, is actually like 2,000 meters taller than Mount Everest. So the classification for Mount Everest being the tallest is that it has the tallest summit above sea level. So it's like the highest point you could reach. However, it's not the tallest mountain from base to summit. I feel confident about this one. It was still Mount Everest. It was always there, even before it was officially discovered. 
there's so many issues with this answer. Not only is that factually wrong, but then they're saying it's still the tallest before it was discovered, which is like saying, if a tree falls in a forest, does it make a sound? We don't know. Maybe, maybe not. So if we didn't see Mount Everest, how do we know it was the tallest? All right, four for eight. I guess I slipped to 50%. We gotta get some momentum now. All right, so a boy and a doctor are fishing. The boy is the doctor's son. However, the doctor isn't the boy's father. Who is the doctor? So I would say that the boy is either a test tube baby, like he was created through CRISPR gene editing and they put his embryo through like some medical device. Or I would say that the doctor has a separate baby mama who acted as a surrogate and there's some legal issues with classifying the son as his son. It has to be one of those, right? The doctor is simply the boy's mother. That's right. Okay, so you caught me slipping once, twice. Five times. Okay, a lot. But the point is, I'm gonna learn from this and I'm gonna get better. But whatever, four for nine. A monkey, a squirrel, and a bird are racing to the top of the coconut tree. Who do you think will get the banana first? Nobody, because they're climbing a coconut tree. I've played Super Mario Sunshine. I've seen these trees. There's no bananas on a coconut tree. Final answer, you're not tripping me up this time. Well, it's none of them. It's a coconut tree, remember? All right, five for 10, I'm hanging in there. Okay, so here we go. A man claims that he can predict the exact score of every football game before it begins. How is that possible? All right, so first off, are we talking American football or soccer? Because if it's soccer, I feel like that's pretty easy because every game ends in low single digit scores, like 2-1 or 1-0 or 3-1. Maybe football's actually staged and he's the commissioner who's pulling the strings, deciding what the scores are. You know that Buffalo Wild Wings commercial where like they pull the lever and they make the game go into overtime? Hey, send it into overtime. This could be that guy. And if it is that guy, then this would make perfect sense. Wait a second, I'm noticing something. He claims. How is that possible? Because you could claim whatever you want. I could claim that I'm a good YouTuber. I could claim that I'm a gaming channel. I could claim a lot of things that aren't true. So I'm gonna say this guy is falsely claiming the correct thing. You can do the same thing as well because the score of every game before it begins is zero, zero. Touche, bright side. Touche. Five for 11. You are running in a race, and you pass the person who is in second place. What position are you in now? So in this case, the black guy's in second. If I'm running this race and I pass him, I would be in second place. Right? Because I couldn't be in first place, because then I'd have to pass that white guy who looks like Anderson Cooper in the front. And I wouldn't be in third place, because that would require me to pass the John Mulaney looking guy in the back. And so if I'm passing the guy in second place, I would be in second place. Logically. You're still not the first one. You passed the runner who was second and took his place, which means that you were only in second place now. Exactly. Tricky. That's what I'm saying. All right, six for 12. Good job. Sometimes you got to be your biggest supporter. Ooh, long one. Buckle up here. No pun intended. You're driving a bus with 10 people on it. At the first stop, should be a comma there, four people get off and two get on. At the next stop, three people get off and five get on. And at the last stop, six people get off and only one gets on. How old is the bus driver? So that question took a turn that I don't even think ChatGPT trying to randomize the question could take it. I'm trying to figure out what any of that further information has to do with the bus driver. Oh, duh, I'm driving the bus. That means the bus driver is me, so how old am I? Well, I'm years old. I'm catching on to their tricks. We said you're driving a bus, so your age is the correct answer here. Are there people out there who think they're a different age than they actually are? Like, how come you can't change your age? Like, what if I feel like I'm 35 because of the life experience I've lived through? Ooh, actually, I see a lot of issues with that. Anyways, Mr. and Mrs. Anderson have six boys. Each boy has one sister. Can you count how many people there are in the family? So I don't think there's 14. The Andersons actually make a family of nine people. No! Let's count together. There are... No, that can't be it. I literally called out their logic. I stopped you. I know what's going on inside of your head. I feel like there was at least three questions in this quiz where I knew what they were trying to do and I just couldn't stop them. Oh, that's so frustrating. All right, so I'm at 50% exactly going into this final question. Wish me luck. There was an airplane crash and unfortunately, every single person on the board died, but two lucky ones survived. How is it possible? I got this question before, you lazy pieces of crap. You just recycle questions left and right. The answer to this is that every single person died. So the two that were a couple and married survived. I'm done with this quiz, eight for 15. I beat you, you can't beat me. Watch these videos, peace out guys.